I get back with a new video lesson for y'all. In today's lesson, we're going to look at bebop cliches and not just literal breakdown of bebop licks, um, but just the conception of how those ideas come about and what we can do with it instead of just playing them over and over again. Now, a couple of years ago, I made a very conscious effort to stay away from playing bebop cliches and just avoid that vocabulary altogether not because i don't like it it's beautiful but for me personally it gets extremely tiring to the ear especially if you are playing gigs where you take at least three to four solos that the problem is that you end up giving you an entire library of whatever ideas and phrases you have if you keep constantly poking at the bebop style now just like many other styles of music Bebop has these very signature moves like uh, or, or even like a, all that stuff. Those kind of motions. Very simple ideas to be very honest with you, but it's hard to control it and it's hard to get away from it. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how they use the combination of scales and arpeggios. Now, more than often, people either use arpeggios excessively or scales, and when they try to use both of them together, it just doesn't work out. Okay, so I'm gonna show you one very solid phrase which stretches across four bars in the first four bars of a rhythm changes, okay? So your rhythm changes, the first four bars is one, six, two, five, three, six, two, five. Okay? So the idea really slow sounds like this. Okay? A little faster. Okay? So... You can possibly hear it. First, I'm starting with B flat triad. Okay? Then I go back to the uh, B flat triad. So B flat D F, B flat, then B D F, which implies the G7. Back to that B. To C minor triad, which is the 2. So. And then on the 5, instead of playing the 5, I'm using this different dominant chord here. So it's... I'm playing the dominant of the, the 7th. So B flat, the 7th is A. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to the 3. Okay? So... After I play the C minor, toggle back to the C, and then da -da -da -da, C sharp E A G. Okay, that's the uh, A flat A dominant seven. And after the G, I just go down to the F, which will be the third of D minor, and then I just go down the B flat major scale. But once I get to the C, I go to the B, which is the third of G7. And then I go up to the flat 9 of the G7, which is A flat. And then I do a 
chromatic enclosure to the G from F. Very bebop. Okay, so from that F. And then over here I do a C minor 7 arpeggio. And then. That is an uh, F7 flat 9. So it's like a diminished seventh arpeggio actually. So A, C, E flat, F sharp, resolve to the F. Okay? So the whole thing together, really, really slow. I want you to pay attention to how we use the triad and how the scale tones come into play to help connect it. And then I'm going to show you a couple of variants using this particular phrase. slowly but I did okay so now since I made the mistake I'm just going to talk about the variance okay um, so when you have these kind of closures especially on the dominant chords where you do this right so I'm doing C, uh, B A flat F F sharp G I can do I can just do a scale so B A flat G F E flat I can just go down the scale to the A, which is the third. Or but what I notice that a lot of these great cats of that era do is that they don't use the same um, dominant cliche in a sequence. They won't do this. Because it's like too repetitive. What they would do is like... They would usually save it for the second half of that entire phrase or the first half and then they don't use it again. That comes from a lot of restraint and just control and ability of your phrases. Okay, so... Uh, now... Or... Or... Right? So... Now, what if I want to use the seventh on the B flat major? Okay, so I go up to the A. I can go down to the A flat and come down to the B. So that's like an A flat diminished uh, seventh chord. And then I can go up to C minor seven and then come down to the A. Okay, and instead of doing a F7 arpeggio, I do, I just go down the scale. Okay, and then you can hear how I'm starting to get more and more ideas just out of this. So you will notice when you do these arpeggios, you are very close to a chord tone for the next chord. And when you hit that chord tone, you can choose to do another arpeggio or just go down the scale. Okay, so what happens if I do... Now, I'm too early on that E flat on the C minor. So... I use that E to buy me some time to get to that E flat. But if that sounds weird, you can do... The, um, uh, that's a little better. Okay, 
obviously there's a rhythmic element to it as well which really helps bring out that real bebop vibe like uh, uh, so there's just multiple variants variations and just approaches to do it but the important thing is how everything is so melodically driven more than anything else okay now generally now when i play standards um it really depends on the musicians i play with if i hear a lot more bob ideas coming out of the horn player or the piano player i will tend to go for it as a soloist but otherwise i don't but i still use these cliches here and there just to help myself um, keep melodically grounded and staying true to the roots of this vocabulary of just jazz vocabulary in general so if i were to play um let's say uh, rhythm changes right so the first bit i was trying to focus a little more on the cliche side of things and then i just started opening up and if i were to truly play just the way i would play it would sound more like so on and so forth so spend more time with this take that little phrase i showed you take this okay and i did mess up the variations or whatever earlier so i'm not sure of what i did exactly until i sit down to edit this but anyway you get the idea using scales and arpeggios and combining them where you choose to run the scale tones down or up and where you choose the arpeggios to go up or down so work out a little scheme maybe a little system and then eventually just build on it and just vocalize all these ideas because they sound so great when they are very vocal all right so i hope you get something out of this and uh, i try to keep it short but i don't think i succeeded anyway the information is all there i'll see you guys in the shed until the next one peace